Welcome to Aviation 101 with Laura. And as you guys have been subscribing know, I am a weather nerd. And I also teach aviation meteorology class where I work. So when I saw the Aviation Weather Center was undergoing a beta version, and then I realized it is going live in just a few days, decided to go in and really do some digging around to make a kind of a comprehensive comparison of what uh, the new site has versus the old site, kind of highlight a few differences. So I'm going to spend some time unpacking that, hopefully show you how to find a few things if you can't find them, and maybe motivate you to like be excited about the new site, because I don't know but about you, but I tend to sometimes not really love change, so till I've kind of accepted that change. So let's start off with the um, the homepage. Now the thing right now is labeled experimental. It's, you can see it like really big in the middle of the screen right here. It's because currently the site is not uh, officially usable for flight briefing purposes. Um, so when you go to their site, the first thing we have is a nice map. I kind of like this. Uh, it's a big overview of what's going on. Uh, if I click it, it's going to actually go off the screen and go to the uh, observations tool, which is cool, but we'll come back to that in a second. Um, one thing that I like about the new site, if you want to know about something, you find the little I uh, symbol right here. So if I click on that symbol, then you get the little legend. Um, so we have a legend of what's going on. It only shows us airports that are IFR or defined as low IFR. Okay, so we'll minimize that. Another thing I like on the new uh, site, if I go to my station data down in this area, I can um, go click on the modify. So currently I've got this set up for airports that are near my area. But if I click on the modify button over here, then I can change this list to whatever I'd like to be in the list. And I can also go a little farther back in the list of METAR. So let's just do the past two hours. If I click the remember uh, right there, then it will remember these airports and have a little nice cookie on my browser. So every time I come back, it's going to work same as before. So let's click go. And then I get the last two hours of data for my airport list. And I can also get all my TAF data down here at the very bottom of the screen for the airports that I have selected. Cool. So that's, that's kind of a quick update of this home site. To get to the observations, I can click on this map or I can do the weather drop down. So let's just do the weather drop down and click observations. And we get this uh, nice comprehensive map view. It looks like some things are currently available on aviationweather.gov. But I found some really great enhancements that I like a lot about this. Um, so first of all, uh, when we look at the broad overview of what's going on, at the top corner, I've got a jet picture and a helicopter picture. So if I click on that, the helicopter picture, it's going to switch it to low altitude mode and it switches over to one to five hours only up to 5,000 feet. So if you're just flying low altitude, you might like that mode. Otherwise, we can go back to general aviation mode, which is up to 18 hour forecasts. The next thing you see is we've got this menu bar over on this side of the screen. Of course, we have map tools to zoom in and out. That makes sense. I do want to call your attention to the uh, little eye symbol in the corner of most of these products. Again, if I look, click on that, I get a really handy legend that comes up. And even on some of these, it's really, really handy. Like with my legend, I can click on the um, symbols and it takes me to a tutorial for all the weather symbols. Super, super cool. So let's go back from there, back to my tool zoom out my map. Okay, so that was available with the little eye icon thing. All right, another really cool thing I like about the map is uh, our customization capability. So if you click on the layers over here, 
We can turn satellite view on and off. We can do a whole bunch of different options of what can be observed observations on this page. All right, so let's pass by that for now. Go to the little gear tool over here. Click on my gear. Here's, here's where this is super, super cool. I love this. So map format. Uh, I don't believe this was really available before at aviationweather.gov. Uh, it defaults to either the light or simple light. But I uh, found that this is so awesome. We can go for, for, I fly a lot of IFR at low altitudes. I can select IFR low level chart for the US. And I'm just gonna zoom into my own favorite area near where I'm at. Um, and so here we've got East Texas. And look at this, we've got our, uh, we've got our low altitude instrument in route chart, awesomeness. Um, going back to here, I can switch over to my VFR chart if you're a VFR only pilot. Awesome. So I really love that because it really helps me with getting oriented of what's going on on here. As far as uh, the imagery, while I'm in here, I want to bring up a couple things. The satellite view, I can change this. So I can have my infrared satellite view, the visible or the water vapor. So I'm going to go back to, let's just put visible satellite imagery on for a moment. Let me close this out. I do have to actually go and actually turn on the satellite view. But I'm, uh, again, I can, I can drag my time slider. So I want to call your attention down here. We have a time slider. And this is really cool on the observation because you didn't used to be able to go this far back in time. I don't believe at least not so easily. So if I drag this back in time, I get my time slider and I can drag it back and forth and see my satellite imagery. But, oh no, in the middle of the night, it's kind of, kind of useless, right? Um, we can go in here and let's change it to the infrared. So overnight, perhaps it's better to look at my infrared because the visible satellite doesn't work. So again, easily accessible with that little gear tool. I can change what I am looking at from the satellite perspective. Same for the radar information. Uh, again, we can turn the loop on and off. If we don't want a loop, we want to loop it manually. I can change for my echo tops, composite, or the lowest angle, whatever I want for the radar tools. So let's move into looking at another tool, the graphical forecast tool. All right, so here is some information that's going to give me some forecasts. I can use this tool um, in a variety of ways. I can, again, configure the layers to what we want on here. We can um, include the convective outlook information. Um, another thing with the map, you know, we can configure it like I showed you before. Also, on any of these maps, we can input a route in here so let's just do something and we can add VORs we can add all kinds of things but we can hit draw path and now I am drawing a path and oh look it's right near some weather if I want to know about this I can click on it and read about my convective segment once again so now we're in the forecasting tool and you notice my slider here at the bottom doesn't really, it doesn't go farther back in time because now we're on the forecast tool and we can now click on the slider and see what's it forecast to be later on on my forecast window here. So again, we can slide this back and forth, see what's going on. Um, I really like this forecast tool. There, and then we can go into the clouds and visibility. We can do our ceiling visibility, clouds. And again, on all of these, if I want to know more, I just click on this I here and I get the legend that, uh, that applies to what I'm looking at currently. Okay, so another thing that is handy with any of this new site stuff is this little question mark in the top of the screen. So I'm going to click on that and really helpful, it goes to a applicable help file for whatever it is you're looking at. So here's my graphical forecasts tool. Um, I can look at the symbols that go with all of these things, super handy. The convective, uh, the traffic management tool for convective activity. If I click the help question mark for that, I get stuff about this weather product. So if you're confused 
about a weather product, the most easy way is just select that little question mark there at the top of the screen. Here's one thing I cannot find anywhere on the site and I can't figure out if it's just gone, gone, but I can't find anything about uh, the winds aloft in text form, which my meteorology students would probably rejoice about, except for the fact that it still seems to appear on FAA knowledge tests. So I wouldn't just say, oh, we're not gonna use text winds aloft anymore or how to decode those. I have a video if you wanna watch a video about decoding text winds aloft that could help you on your knowledge test. But I can't find that anywhere um, here on, on their website. Okay, so another cool thing, let's go back to the home screen. This uh, over here, it's called Decision Support Services. I'm gonna click on this because this allows me a really handy tool to generate static images. So we have a lot of nice animations and, and stuff, but let's say we want to generate a static image of something. For my dispatch class, dispatchers, we use a lot the high level significant weather prog chart. So how do we get to that? Well, what we're gonna do for this is click on the significant weather high level chart. You can select how many hours from now. So let's just go with the um, six Zulu issuance. And I believe my area is H. Yeah, basically. So I click on the chart area H and it automatically generates my image right down here below it. Pretty cool, right? Um, the other thing, again, if I want to know more about that product, I click the question mark and it's going to give me some help with that decision support imagery. Going back to there. So we can also use this to generate the prog chart or the significant weather chart. So if these are things you like to do and you use it a lot, let's uh, do the prog chart. So here we have the normal prog chart that you're used to seeing generated right there. You can download the image got all of our information here on it. Uh, if we want the significant weather low level prog chart, click on that link. And let's say I want 18 hours from now. And there is my same image, just like you're used to seeing with the little handy legend on the bottom of the chart. Super cool. So that's still available. Um, and even, even nicer, we have now the option for icing. We can generate these for turbulence. Um, yeah, all kinds of cool products that we can do here. All right, um, so I really like that new that new thing. Let's also look at another feature I think is super handy. So let's go to tools, okay? We haven't really explored this yet. If you go to archive view, this is incredible to me. So the archive view is pretty amazing. If we take a look at this, it tells us that we can go up to 15 days in the past and we can actually have this entire website revert to a view up to 15 days ago. So I can look back at what the weather was saying before my flight, even up to two weeks ago. So if I, for example, click on a day on this calendar and I can pick a time in UTC, whatever, let's pick in the morning for me in the morning and click load archive. You notice that my screen bar at the top has turned different color. It tells me I'm in archive mode. Um, but now I can click back to the home page. This is the weather that was occurring at my selected date and time. So on October 2, which is almost two weeks ago from me today, showing me exactly what I would have seen had I gone to any product on the page. Is, it's, it's pretty incredible to me. So I have my old archive. Notice the weather is totally different. Um, it's pretty amazing. So I really like this tool as far as being able to go back and see what's happened in the past. Incredible, incredible improvement. So let's just click here to return to the live data. And it would just go back to whatever is live. See, clearly it's, it's different. So that was accessible with tools and then your archive view right there. Another thing I would have on my list that I enjoyed is um, within my products, I can go to forecast discussions on this drop down menu. And the forecast discussions gives me, uh, this is a very easy way to get the regional forecast discussions. So if I click in my area, Shreveport, 
uh, I can get my whole information, my little briefing. I can click full text. It's going to load another site where I have my whole forecast discussion. But super handy that we have the whole United States divided up. And that was through my products and then the forecast discussions tool. Um, and then let's see other stuff. Oh, yes, this is helpful if we go to tools, the terminal weather dashboard. Click on that. If you're traveling and you want to see what's going on at top airports around the United States where there might be issues, we have this. If you input into this terminal weather dashboard, the ID at top, it's going to do that. Or I can change it to whatever I want to see. Whatever. We'll just load a few. And I can load certain airports. I can make this list customized. Um, I can also currently, uh, we can see that it's in forecast mode, but if I click observation, it will switch over to a history of what's going on. So currently you can see it's 1640. So currently at DFW have some wind gusts going on. If I click on the name of the airport, it's going to take me to individual terminal weather da dashboard for just G just DFW site or whatever I've selected. Um, and I can look down here and see all the information. This is the observation, remember. Um, but if I click forecast, here we have all the information about what's supposedly going to happen in the future. I can click to keep moving over on the little right arrow there. That's here to go forward in time. And notice I want to point out how some of these are purple, which is this lamp thing. Lamp is actually something called localized aviation MOS program. Uh, so you may have seen the MOS for forecasting within Garmin Pilot. Uh, the MOS is a statistical forecast system. It's not human generated, but it does allow us to project even farther out than the uh, forecast for an airport might have. So you can see that at uh, on the 14th at 1800Z, this forecast model has switched over to the lamp, this, uh, the lamp type of forecast. Um, so that's kind of cool. I can really use this uh, again to go into my all top stations. You can click that easily and it goes to all the top stations. And you can see uh, basically any time after 1800 the next day, I'm gone into this lamp model and they're outlined in purple. So that's what that means. Um, yeah, that is kind of a quick overview of some of my favorite new features. Uh, one thing that another thing I could not find anywhere on here was a link to the convective outlook. Uh, it still exists, but it doesn't it's not easy to get to from the uh, new Aviation Weather Center website. So I'm going to be putting a link in the video description for this site, but it's through the National Weather Service Storm Prediction Center. You can still get to it um, and click on it and, and look at it like usual. It's just not as easy to get to from this aviationweathercenter.gov or aviationweather.gov. The other thing I cannot find on aviationweather.gov is the single site radar tool. So if you want, instead of the composite view of all the radar, uh, you can go to radar.weather.gov and you can use the search bar up here to select a single site radar if you would like to do that. But it used to be a little easier to find. It's not really anymore. So I'll put a link to that also in the video description. So thanks for watching. I hope this helped. I think my biggest enhancements are the archive view up to two weeks in the past, these graphics that I can automatically generate, which are super awesome, and then my terminal weather dashboard that I was just showing, and just the ability to really customize, uh, especially this site with the different base layer maps, um, all the different overlays that I can use. It's, it's really quite phenomenal. So hope you enjoyed that and hope you're not scared of the new website anymore.